Very good morning, dear students. Welcome to Learning Radius Current Affairs 2021 discussion. In the last discussion, we discussed 10 topics from national issues. In this series, also, we'll be discussing 10 topics from Current Affairs 2021 right from the national issues area. And in today's discussion, we'll be discussing Anemia Mukt Bharat or Anemia Mukt Bharat Index, Dairy Production in the Indus Valley Civilization, Rising Marriage Age SPI Report, Maldaris, All India Trade Union Congress Turns 100, Mission Saga 2, Char Chapari, Nurturing Neighborhoods Challenge, Committee to Review Guidelines on Television Rating Agencies, ADIP Scheme. So these are all were the 10 topics what we are going to discuss. Listen to the last 10 topics what we discussed in the last series. Have a proper understanding. At the same time, don't skip the analysis video of 2020 and the understanding video of 2017, 18 and 19 questions to have absolute idea what manner UPSC is framing questions from national, international, economy, environment, and science and technology. So in today's discussion, this 10 topic, that is ADIP scheme, committee to review guidelines on television rating agencies, nurturing neighborhood challenge, Char Chapari, Mission Sagar 2, All India Trade Union Congress AITU turns 100, Maldaris, Racing Marriage Age, SPI report, Dairy production in the Indus Valley and anemia book Bharat. And in every discussion we discuss or in every topic we discuss the current affair of that particular topic. At the same time we will be looking how that particular current affair came in the magazine or in the newspaper or in the PIB and what is the manner in which that current affair as it was discussed in all these articles or in the magazines and newspaper. So let's come to Anemia Mukt Bharat Index. Before that, let me repeat once again, when we come to a particular topic from a UPSC point of view, you should have three angles for all topics. The first one is, you should have a complete idea about that particular topic. That is very, very important, a complete current affair idea. Second one, a static clarity regarding that particular topic. There is the GK related to that particular topic should be absolutely clear in your mind. And the third one is the possibility of related questions to that particular current affair. So I am discussing in detail how UPSC can relate the questions from a current affair in an all in 2020 analysis videos. So try to watch that and get clarity how nowadays UPSC is making questions in UPSC question paper right from current affairs. So let's come back to Anemia Mukt Bharat Index. Anemia Mukt Bharat, an initiative of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, UNICEF, has been launched to reduce the prevalence of anemia all over India. So you can expect questions related to anemia, related to blood cells, and the basic science behind that. And Haryana state has the best Anemia Mukt Bharat Index among 29 states in the country. Haryana was ranked at the top slot with AMB index of 46.7. This was the discussion and this was the current affair of that particular time. And in the business line, there was a news. Anemia continues to be a major concern among the Indian women and children health expert. Anemia Mukbar aims to foster new strategies for tackling anemia. Heal Foundation, an Indian non-profit organization, held Unite to Eradicate Anemia e Submit 2020. Episode 13 of the Heal Thai Samwad series to discuss the prospects of an anemia free India. So, regarding anemia, there was discussions. Newspapers covered this concern in a very serious manner. Anemia continues to be a major concern among Indian women and children. Health expert, the business line discussion came in that particular manner. So, Anemia Mukh Bharat aimed to foster new strategies for tackling anemia. That was the discussion. And Heal Foundation and Indian Nonprofit Organization held Unite to Eradicate Anemia e Submit 2020, the episode 13, the Heal Thai Samwad series to discuss the prospect of anemia free India was the discussion. At the same time, there was more discussions related to the summit also. 
The summit was organized to discuss the challenge faced by a developing nation to tackle anemia and prospective solution to those challenges. So from Maine's perspective also in future, you can think one question from social perspective that is related to the health. The summit was organized to discuss the challenges faced by a developing nation to tackle anemia and prospective solution to those challenges. The summit also included discussions on how accurate point of care, POC, diagnosis and data can be game changer for anemic Mukbarat. So A and B as it is in discussion. Next topic of discussion is related to dairy production in the Indus Valley civilization. It's a current affair at the same time area related to your ancient India Indus Valley civilization every year you can expect questions least minimum one question will be there it can go up to three questions right from ancient Indus Valley and related. So here new study has shown that dairy products were being produced by the Harappan as far back as 2500 BC. So the first and the foremost important thing here is now you should understand dairy production in the Indus Valley civilization is in discussion. So Indus Valley in total is important. At the same time now Harappa society is very very important. So you can expect statement wise questions related to Indus Valley civilization, related to Harappan civilization, related to all the sites related to Indus Valley civilization. So by analyzing residues on ancient pots, researchers show the earliest direct evidence of dairy product processing, this throwing fresh light on the rural economy of the civilization. The studies were carried out on 59 shards of pottery from Kotada Budli, a small archaeological site in the present day Gujarat. And uh, you can expect very simple easy question, a term Kotada Badli is in use, is related to what? Like that UPSC can ask, that's when UPSC want to make a question very simple, that's the manner in which they frame. This particular term is in use, is related to what? Now in Hindu newspaper you can see, Evidence of dairy production in the Indus Valley civilization, the Hindu. In this manner, a beautiful picture and it is a striking picture also. Evidence of dairy production in the Indus Valley civilization, the Hindu. Traces indicate the milk may have been boiled before conception. So now Hindu is directly telling traces indices, sorry, traces indicate that milk may have been boiled before conception. The year 2020 marks 100 years of discovery of Indus Valley civilization. And a new study has shown that dairy products were being produced by the Harappa as far back as 2500 BC. So from current affairs point of view, in preliminary, you can expect questions from Indus Valley civilization because now it's going with the 100th year. At the same time, in mains also, you can expect it can go up to NSA topic. So because it is that serious about because it's 100th year. And by analyzing residues on ancient parts, Researchers show the earliest direct evidence of dairy product processing, thus throwing fresh light on the rural economy of the civilization. The studies were carried out on 59 shards of pottery from Kotla Badli, a small archaeological site in the present day Gujarat. That was a discussion in the newspaper. So that's about the evidence of dairy production in the Indus Valley civilization. So try to have more details in connection with Indus Valley as a static topic, Harappa as a site. At the same time, the dairy production and the related talk discussions from the newspaper. Next is about the Racing Marriage Age SBI report. According to the latest SBI report, Racing Marriage Age decision will have enormous social and economic benefit. India is on the verge of raising the legal age of marriage of women from 18 years to 21 years, which will be the same as that of men. The government had changed legal age of marriage for women in 1978 when it was increased from 15 to 18 by amending the erstwhile Shada Act of 1929. So that is, I bolded that particular area because UPSC can directly move to Shada Act of 1929 and ask statement related questions. One, two, three, four. Out of the four statements, we told other statement right in connection with Shada Act of 1929. UPSC aspirants may not be getting why suddenly Shard Act of 1929. Now UPSC can ask that right from the current affair because it's a related topic in connection with raising marriage age. So the government had changed legal age of marriage for women in 1978 when it was increased from 15 to 18 by amending the erstwhile Shard Act of 1929. 
Presently, nearly 65% of countries have legal marriage age of 18 years only. Now, as per estimates, the percentage of female doing graduation will increase by an at least 5 to 7 percent point from the current level of 9.8 percent. Now, in the newspaper, the print, there was a major heading. Modi government plan to raise legal age of marriage for women can bring enormous gains, says SBI. So from social perspective also you should understand that one. From prelims perspective as like I mentioned, UPSC can ask related acts. Domestic Violence Act I told yesterday how UPSC can frame Domestic Violence Act questions because shared responsibility right from the Supreme Court verdict they can frame. In the same manner, the act related to the marriage age, the, there can be statement related questions. So the print, the newspaper as it is discussing Modi government Plan to raise legal age of marriage for women can bring enormous gains, says SBI. Marriage at a young age means not even a quarter of women in India get into labor force, despite accounting for almost half of the 1.3 billion population. That was the discussion. And the newspaper's first paragraph was New Delhi Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's plan to raise the legal age for marriage of women carry enormous economic and social gains for the world's second most populous nation according to the State Bank of India. The benefit range from lowering maternal death and improving nutrition level in the near term to pulling, putting more girls in college and enabling women to achieve greater financial independence in the long term, Soumya Khandi Kosh, an economist with SPI, wrote in a report to clients Thursday. That was the newspaper discussion. So, a serious work from the side of the government of India and the government of India is planning to raise the legal age for marriage of women and that discussion related with current affairs at the same time, you can expect conventional static or related questions right from this area or right from the study. Next topic is Maldaris. Maldaris, I'm expecting a question right from prelims at the same time uh, in the mains too. Now, Maldaris project line could displace Maldaris within gear to create inviolate space. So in Maldaris, there is a lot of possibility of getting question. What is Maldaris, first of all? You can get a question related to gear. You can get a question related to lion. As like UPSC asked related to elephant 2020. You can expect a question from um, elephant. Oh, sorry, you can expect a question from lion. Or you can get a question from the national parks and wildlife sanctuary related to gear. And at the same time, you can get a question from inviolate space. What is inviolate space as far as gear is concerned? Or what does the term means? So here the discussion is only one line. Project line could displace Maldaris within gear to create inviolate space. So Maldaris, a traditional pastoral people found in and around the Gir National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary, might end up being uprooted from their homes if the project line proposal takes place. So it's a crucial issue. It's going to be affected over a traditional group of people. So who all are Maldaris? Maldaris is a traditional pastoral people found in and around the Giru National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary might end up being uprooted from their homes if the project land proposal takes place. And the proposal created by the Wildlife Institute of India and the Gujarat Forest Department talks of creating an inviolate space of 1000 square kilometer. So this discussion came in connection with creating of inviolate space. So what is inviolate space? Inviolate spaces are areas free from anthropomorphic pressures. That is free from human pressures. So inviolate spaces are areas free from anthropomorphic pressure. Resources extraction of forest produce like fuel wood, fodder and minor forest produce as well as human habitation are not allowed in such places. So in order to have a better place for lion, we are trying to create an inviolate space of 1000 square kilometer. Inviolate space means I told free from human activities or free from anthropomorphic pressure. And the significance is it is launched by the Prime Minister of India. Project Lion was launched by Mr. Narendra Modi on August 15, 2020. So Project Lion is in discussion. At the same time, inviolate space is in discussion, Maldaris is in discussion, Gir National Park as it is in discussion, and moreover, the static areas, you should have a clarity in connection with this. So
so about mulberries this peoples are sorry the, these peoples are the mulberries who have raised in the areas for several generation they live in the they live in settle called ness n e w s and make their living by selling milk from their water buffaloes so this is the basic manner in which they live that is the group mulberries live in down to earth magazine on 28th october 2020 there was a discussion and it was project lion could displace mulberries within gear to create in violet space so in that down to earth it is very direct and sharp project lion could displace mulberries within gear to create in violet space the proposal seek to relocate 2500 families of the community from the gear protected area within 10 years so now it's very clear why we have to understand mulberries and there was a picture in this manner in down to earth this is the manner in which they live the picture is showing absolute clarity how mulberries as such live now everything which i mentioned then this is the first paragraphs of uh, down to earth mulberries a traditional pastoral people found in and around gir national park and wildlife sanctuary might end up being uprooted from their homes if the project land proposal takes place a down to earth investigation has shown the proposal created by wildlife institute of india and the gujarat forest department talks of creating an inviolate space of 1000 square kilometer in violet space are areas free from anthropomorphic pressures the source extraction of forest produce like fuel wood fodder and minor forest produce as well as human habitation are not allowed in such places project plan was launched by pm mr narendra modi august 15 2020 so that is about mulberries at the same time about gir and what is asiatic lion landscape what is enlarging gir is about has to be understood now let's come to the next topic that is all india trade union congress aituc turns 100 so what is the significance of all india trade union congress we know it is the first national trade union so country's first national trade union all india trade union congress aituc as a formal pressure group we study aituc and citu and all so country's first national trade union all india trade union congress aituc turns 100 the all india trade union congress aituc is the oldest trade union federation in india according to professional statistics from ministry of labor aituc had a membership of 14.2 million in 2013 it was founded on 31st october 1920 with lala lajpat rai as its president so the possibility of getting questions from uh, aituc is the at the same time you can expect question from trade unions you can expect question from history related to trade unions you can expect questions directly related to the history of aituc or it can go up to lala lajpat rai related questions too so aituc is in discussion in hindu newspaper it was in a different angle even as aituc turns 100 challenges seem endless the hindu the country's first national trade union all india trade union congress aituc turns 100 on saturday the state union of the union will mark the day with an event in bangalore reflecting on the past as well as the daunting task the union faced in bringing together workers in the post liberalization era so they discuss with a different angle they are telling things are not easy in the post liberalization era aituc is having a long way to go they have a long work to do in connection with the present scenario it was in 1942 more than two decades after 64 unions came together to form the aituc in 1920 at mumbai that the Union organized the working class in textile mills of Bangalore, mines in Hooghly and Kolar, besides BD and tiles industries. That was the article as such discussed the background behind the formation and the history behind the formation as such. So ATUC is in discussion. Try to know the history behind. Next topic of discussion is Mission Sagar Two. So when it comes to Mission Sagar Two, COVID nineteen, obviously it is under discussion. so mission sagar mission sagar 2 covid 19 the countries related to the objectives of mission sagar all has to be very clear as an aspirant 
So the government of India is providing assistance to friendly foreign countries to overcome natural calamities and COVID-19 pandemic and towards the same INS Airawat is carrying a consignment of 100 tons of food aid for the people of Sudan. This was the basic discussion. Mission Saga 2 follows the first Mission Saga undertaken in May, June 2020. So we had Mission Saga, first of all, that you can tell Mission Saga 1, it was named as Mission Saga. So Mission Saga was the then Mission Saga 2. And the countries we reached out as India reached out to Maldives, Mauritius, Sicilies, Madagascar, Comoros. And we provided food and medicines. So that is about Mission Saga 2. As a part of Mission Saga 2, Indian naval ship Airavad, the Airavad delivered food to Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti and Eritrea. So the countries to which we delivered food is very important, there should be clarity. So in Mission Saga 2, the countries were Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti and Eritrea. At the same time, another term called Sagar, S-A-G-A-R is in use. Because all this project is in coming in line with security and growth for all in the region. That is the full form of Sagar. So Mission Sagar 2 is in line with the Prime Minister's vision of Sagar or Prime Minister's vision of security and growth for all in the region. So what is Prime Minister's vision related to Sagar and what is Sagar is very important. At the same time, Mission Sagar 2, you should have clarity. So Mission Sagar 2 is in line with the Prime Minister's vision of security and growth for all in the region. Saga and highlights the importance accorded by India to relations with her maritime neighbors and further strengthen the existing part. So my dear students, don't forget to work out the question papers, especially the static, combined and the current affairs and work out all the 35 questions and have an edge with these discussions in the coming preliminary examination. And PIB gave a clear detail related to Mission Saga 2. Ministry of Defense, Mission Saga 2, that was the heading. And handing over foot aid to Sudan by INS Airavat. Posted on 2nd November 2020 by PIB Delhi. Now, as a part of Mission Saga 2, Indian naval ship Airavat entered Port Sudan on 2nd November 2020. The government of India is providing assistance to friendly foreign countries to overcome natural calamities and COVID-19 pandemic and toward the same INS Airavad is carrying a consignment of 100 tons of food aid for the people of Sudan. That is the first paragraph in the PIB discussion. So, and Mission Saga 2 follows the first Mission Saga undertaken in May, June 2020 wherein India reached out to Maldives, Mauritius, Sicilies, Madagascar, Comoros and provided food aid and medicines. As a part of Mission Saga 2, Indian naval ship Airavat will deliver food aid to Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti and Eritrea. So this is the same thing which I conveyed before and this is the discussion what came in uh, PIB in relation with Mission Saga 2. Now in Hindu newspaper, INS Airavat reaches Sudan with food aid to overcome effects of pandemic. So that was very specific. INS Airavat reaches Sudan with food aid to overcome effects of pandemic. That was the discussion. Under Mission Saga 2, INS Airavat will deliver food aid to Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti, Eritrea amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So they discussed very specifically what all things I mentioned. What is Mission Sagar? What is Mission Sagar 2? What is Sagar is about? Which all are the countries we as such supported? All as such is discussed in Hindu newspaper too. This one is about Char Chapari. Our next topic is Char Chapari. And Char Chapari was a controversy in uh, national discussion. Char Chapari culture and Char Chapari was a controversy and the term Miyas were there in discussion too. So a proposal for a museum reflecting Char Chapari culture has triggered a controversy. Char Chapari is a shifting riverine islands of Brahmaputra and primarily inhabited by the Muslims of Bengali origin. And uh, who are the Miyas? Miya community comprises dissidents of Muslim migrants from East Bengal, 
now Bangladesh to Assam, they came to be referred to as Mias, often in a derogatory manner. The community migrated in several waves, starting with the British annexation of Azam in 1826 and continuing into partition and the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War and have resulted in changes in demographic composition of the region. I just read to get a to give a clarity about Char Chapari right from the slide. So what's the controversy and who all are Char Chaparis and what is Char Chapari culture? So Char Chapari is a the discussion is starting or the Current affair is starting from this perspective, a proposal for a museum, a proposal for a museum reflecting Char Chapari culture. So a proposal for a museum reflecting Char Chapari culture has triggered controversy. So since it triggered a controversy, we are looking what is Char Chapari. So basically Char Chaparis are shifting riverine islands of Brahmaputra. So there, there's a scope of geography question related to shifting riverine islands of Brahmaputra you studied in geography. So the nature and character of a shifting riverine island, Majuli Islands and all, you are very clear about in GK perspective too. So Char Chaparis are shifting riverine islands of Brahmaputra and are primarily inhabited by the Muslims of Bengali origin. They, as it was referred as Mias. So here, who are the Miyas that was there in the discussion in the current affairs? Because the Miya community comprised descendants of Muslim migrants from East Bengal, now Bangladesh to Assam. They came to be referred to as Miyas often in a derogatory manner. And they migrated in several waves, starting with the British annexation of Assam in 1826 and continuing into partition and the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. So the migration happened in... Uh, several waves. Now in Indian Express on November 2020 there was a news the Miyas of Assam and their Char Chapari culture. So in Indian Express it was directly conveyed the Miyas of Assam and their Char Chapari culture. A proposal for museum reflecting Char Chapari culture has triggered a controversy. Who are the Miyas? What are the Char Chaparis? And what is the controversial about the proposal? They asked as a UPSC mains question paper, they ask three questions also in the newspaper. Who are the Mias? What are the charge of Paris? And uh, what is a controversial or what is controversial? What is controversial about the proposal? And this was the figure in that particular newspaper regarding charge of Paris and all. So I told who are Mias and uh, what is their basic character and how they, why it became a controversy and all. Now, let's do Next topic is Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge. Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge launched by the Union Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry. It's a three years initiative will support cities to develop pilot and scale solution that enhance the quality of life of young children, their caregivers, families in the public realm. The challenge is conducted with the support of uh, Bernard Van Leer Foundation, Netherlands with technical support from WRI India. So now nurturing neighborhood challenge, the first important point is it is by the Union Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry. And what is it? It's a three-year initiative which supports cities to develop pilot and scale solution that enhance the quality of life of young children, their caregivers and families in the public realm. So when it comes to such topics, you should be very clear about the objective. Because for, if you look into 2017 question paper, UPSC asked, what is Unnad Bharat Abhiyan? Everybody is clear about Unnad Bharat Abhiyan. When you read the statements, you get confused. You feel as like all three or all four are looking like Unnad Bharat Abhiyan. So, you should have clarity in the objectives of the programs. If the government of India is coming with a national program, you should have absolute clarity regarding the objective. Now, Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge is a three-year initiative. will support cities to develop pilot and scale solution that enhance the quality of life of young children, their caregivers and families in the public realm. Though the challenge, selected cities will receive technical assistance and capacity building to reimagine parks and open spaces, improve access to early childhood facilities, adapt public spaces with early childhood-oriented amenities, and create accessible, safe, walkable streets for young children and families. 
so giving more space and giving a proper accommodation in the society especially for young children and families the challenge will be open to all smart cities other cities with more than 5 lakh population and capital of states and union territories and pib came with a clear explanation related to same and they have mentioned ministry of housing and urban affairs as a major heading nurturing hyper neighborhood challenge cohort announced 25 cohort cities shortlist support and technical assistance to selected cities over next 6 months over 60 cities submitted application for the challenge so this were the major heading came in the uh, pib and they mentioned nurturing neighborhood challenge cohort announced and this was the explanation the smart cities mission ministry of housing and urban affairs announced 25 shortlisted cities for the nurturing neighborhood challenge UPSC can revise it, and they can ask nurturing neighborhood challenges in discussion and check the statements related to A, B, C, D like that. They can give cohort in collaboration with the Bernan Van Lee Foundation and technical partner WRI. The challenge is a three-year initiative aimed at supporting early childhood-friendly neighborhood under the government's Smart Cities mission. So I explained twice or thrice about the objective of nurturing neighborhood challenge. keep that in your mind and uh, try to have absolute clarity in connection with that so here the following cities have been selected for the nurturing neighborhood challenge agartala bangalore kambathur dharmashala erod hubali darwad hyderabad indore jabalpur kakinada kochi kohima kota nagpur rajkot ranchi raktak rorkela selam surat tiruvannamalai tirupur ujjain vadodara and varangal the cohort will receive technical assistance capacity building and scale up support to experiment and implement trials and pilot over the next 6 months to demonstrate early wins solicit citizen part participation and build consensus around their proposal so this was a discussion try to have clarity regarding the cities also because in 2020 you can see out of the following countries which are the members of g20 upsc asked so you should have absolute clarity regarding g20 countries because they asked uh, four they gave four options and asked which all other countries are there in g20 so because in G, in 2020 march g20 conducted a virtual and that was the one of the first virtual international uh, summit so related to that they asked a question so here also upsc can ask out of this which all other cities comes under nurturing neighborhood challenge in that manner also they can go now next question is committee to review guidelines on television rating agencies ministry of inp constitute committee to review guidelines on television rating agencies in india the present guidelines issued by the ministry of information and broadcasting on television rating agencies in india were notified after detailed deliberation by the parliamentary committee on television rating points so here committee to review guidelines on television rating agencies first of all we should have an idea why at the same time in what manner and who constituted it so once again the present guidelines issued by the ministry of information and broadcasting on television rating agencies in india were notified after detailed deliberations by the parliamentary committee committee on television rating point trp you may be very clear about trp or trp rating most of the time we come across with the term related to media so trp constituted by mib and recommendation of telecom regulatory authority the the committee shall carry out an appraisal of the existing system examine trying recommendation notified from time to time overall industry scenario and addressing the needs of the stakeholders and make recommendation for robust transparent and accountable rating system through challenges if any in the existing guidelines and uh, the terms of reference for the committee shall be as under according to the discussion study past recommendation made by various forums on the subject of television rating system in india and matter incidental thereto study recent recommendation of telecom regulatory authority on the subject suggest steps for enhancing competition in the sector so there is wide discussion related to broadcasting ministry committee in hindu newspaper this was the discussion 
information and broadcasting ministry that is ibm that is information and broadcasting ministry forms committee to review trp guidelines it follows revelations that a few news channels had tampered with the rating i hope it's clear right now so hindi newspaper as it is telling it follows revelation that few news channels had tampered with the rating the information and broadcasting ministry has constituted a four member committee they constituted a four member committee to review the guidelines on television rating agencies headed by shashi shagar vempathi ceo of prasar bharati this comes after the mumbai police investigation that revealed that few news channels had tampered with the rating so few news channels as such tampered the rating so hindu newspaper as such conveyed that information and broadcasting ministry forms committee to review trp guidelines now the next one is adip scheme the last topic in the second series adip we know we it's very common so a virtual adip camp for distribution of assistive aids and devices at block level for divinjans under the adip scheme of government of india was organized at uh, talwandi by block office firozpur district in punjab was the news and this is the first camp being organized by the alenco under dp wd <coughs> social justice and empowerment under the adip scheme so what is adip assistance to disabled persons for purchasing fitting of aids and appliances so that is adip so adip scheme is to assist the needy disabled persons in procuring durable sophisticated and scientifically manufactured modern standard aids and appliances that can promote their physical social and psychological rehabilitation by reducing the effects of disabilities and enhance their economic potential so that is what is adip is for so adip is assistance to disabled persons for purchasing fitting of aids or appliances that is adip adip scheme is to assist the needy disabled persons in procuring durable sophisticated and scientifically manufactured modern standard aids and appliances that can promote their physical social and psychological rehabilitation by reducing the effects of disabilities and enhance their economic potential that is the basic work or objective of adip that is assistance to disabled person for purchasing fitting of aids or appliances in hindu newspaper right from this figure i hope it's very clear in hindu newspaper special camp to distribute aid for differently abled the hindu so i told about the camp in the first discussion itself and in that newspaper the first picture itself is very clear assistive aids adip now is very clear with this particular figure assistive aids a special camp for differently able person to be held between february 18 and 25 will provide the following items wheelchair hearing aid walking stick and spectacles special camp for differently able person to distribute aid under the assistance to disabled person for purchasing fitting of aid and appliances scheme would be held across madurai district between february 18 and 25 said member of parliament from madurai so vengadeshan the differently able would get walking sticks wheelchair spectacles and hearing aid was a local news came in uh, hindu newspaper related to a reach so we should have more clarity regarding what is adip scheme what government of india is looking for what are the basic objective of adip and what all support they are getting right from adip so my dear students we completed the next 10 topics right from national issues and we'll be going to the third series with the next 10 topics and one thing should be very clear in the mind of my students that is you should have a clear focus focused mind is the most powerful weapon in this world if anybody is focused with self discipline he become an unstoppable force nobody can stop him so my students should have that capacity you should be an unstoppable force so two things should be the one thing you should have self discipline self discipline with focused mind so self discipline means a clear life with the right routine that is very very important and second one the focus should be very clear what should be studied national 
and how in what manner upsc is framing the question that should be absolutely clear in your mind if you have clarity in that and if you have self discipline in your learning and working out the question paper as according to the time and the requirement then sky is your limit so in the next discussion in the series number 3 we'll be discussing the next 10 topics and we'll have more analysis in connection with national current affairs in that particular discussion so have a great time once again focused mind is the most powerful weapon in this world have a great time happy learning